What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Code Peterson tutorial. We have another instructional technology slash generative AI tutorial, and this is with Notebook LM. Now, we've already made one of these tutorials before, and by now, pretty much everyone who's interested in this kind of tech is familiar with the generative AI deep dive conversation where it's like a podcast episode and there's two hosts having a dialogue based off of whatever outline or, or resources that you submitted into this platform. Well, they have added on kind of a new step with a new update. And basically now, instead of just sitting and passively listening to this information, there is a beta interactive version. So let's check it out. So again, if you haven't been to this before, you can just do a Google search for Notebook LM. That's the easiest way to find it. And then you just go to try Notebook LM. And then it takes us into this area here. Now, if you are using this for the first time, your screen's gonna look like this. So if you already have some notebooks in there, uh, then you can either edit those or you can create something new. Just to start one uh, from scratch, I will go ahead and go here to where it says create. And it's just like last time, you can add something from Google Drive, you can add something from a link from a website, you can upload a document that you created or you can even paste text. So basically, you know, since I I love teaching technology to people, um, I've taught programming and coding and web design and digital media and everything else uh, at the high school level. And I still teach instructional technology and coding classes at the college level. Uh, so basically what I did was I just went to Chad GPT and I just made a simple outline and asked for what the best programming languages are for junior high slash high schoolers as they take a class that is giving an introduction to computer science. So I copied that content and then I go here to paste text. And then I will go to insert. And it's just like the other way. They do have a few uh, other new updates in here. We can talk about those on other tutorials down the road. And the one we're looking for is this generative deep dive. So that's still the same in the same area. We'll click generate. And here it is. So just like before, you can listen to the deep dive up there, but you'll notice there is this interactive mode beta underneath. So instead of clicking on the play button, I'm going to select interactive mode beta. It takes us to this screen. Then we go down here to the bottom and there's a little play audio. All right, so you're thinking about getting into coding, huh? But kind of feeling overwhelmed by like all the languages out there. Yeah, I, I hear you. It's like staring at this massive menu with just tons of dishes, right? Super exciting, but all uh, a little intimidating maybe. Totally. Well, luckily you meant over this awesome document that breaks down like the best coding languages based on your age, your experience level, all that good stuff. Okay, so, so that's kind of, nothing uh, new, but check out all, this new you know? feature yeah. We're gonna help you if find I the click the join button. Just kickstart this whole, oh, wait, someone wants to join. Hey, go for it. So we know how important it is for students to be engaged with their content in order to be willing to learn it better. And since there is such a high interest in students for being game developers and game designers, what are your thoughts on teaching an intro to CS course as a game development course? That's a really interesting point you bring up. Yeah, it's a great question. And it totally aligns with something we were planning to talk about. Yeah, Check that sure. out. Using game development as an intro to CS course, it can really be a powerful motivator. Right, like you're not just learning code for the sake of it. Exactly. You're learning it to create... So how cool is that? You can actually ask questions, and instead of it being like a podcast, it's kind of more like a radio talk show uh, where you can have yourself call in and actually interact uh, with these hosts. Something that you're passionate about. And as the document we've been using points out, C Sharp and Unity are fantastic for that. Yeah. Like oh, yeah, uh-huh. How effective could we meet CS standards by using GB Studio as a game developer course? 
Okay, so that's a really great question. Yeah, it's super relevant to what we've been talking about, for sure. And it kind of touches on something we were planning to get into later. That's right. You asking specifically about using GB Studio and how well that meets the standards, you know, for a CS course. Yeah. What's fascinating here is that GB Studio actually aligns really well with some core concept. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even though it's designed for game development, you're still engaging with fundamental ideas like logic, sequencing, and problem solving. Mm -hmm. And those are all part of like your basic computer science standards. Totally. You know, you're planning out game mechanics, designing the interactions. You're essentially coding, you know? Right. And while GP Studio may not directly teach a text-based language like Python or Java, mm -hmm. It provides this really accessible way to grasp the underlying concepts. Right. It's still problem solving with code. Exactly. It's like awesome stuff. And you know, I had to put that in there because I love making games with Studio. So a lot of potential with this uh, in really kind of any area. But, you know, instead of just listening to the podcast episode, uh, like we could do before if you were if you were preparing for a test or kind of finding a way to listen to your notes in a in a more engaging way. Now instead you can actually think of questions in your mind as you're as you're listening and then you can send those questions to them and kind of go down some of those rabbit holes. Now obviously you might want to write down some of the responses, just like with any kind of with generative AI, you might get some responses that are not as accurate or anything like that. So it might be something you want to kind of check into and to fact check it, so to speak, but a pretty awesome thing to do. So I would love to know the ideas that you're having in your minds right now as you're seeing these opportunities. How could you incorporate it in with careers or education or hobbies? Let me know in the comments below. So as always, I appreciate you taking the time and checking this out. I'm excited to play around with it even more. And I really hope to catch you on another tutorial down the road.